of September. I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of the meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. It is 6 o'clock. Would you please stand with me as Mr. Sanders leads us in the invocation and Mrs. Bush in the Pledges of Allegiance? I'd like to have us uh, be reminded today of the tragic incident that happened this morning in HISD. A bus uh, crashed and two were dead and others were injured. And so I'd like to, us to take a moment, just a moment, to take just a moment of silence. So I'd like to have that be on our minds as well as this. <clears throat> September 11th, 2001, there were a series of four coordinated terrorist attacks on the United States that claimed the lives of 246 victims of four airplanes, 2,606 victims inside the World Trade Center and surrounding buildings that included 71 law enforcement officers and 343 firefighters, and another 125 victims at the Pentagon. Since then, more than 147 people have died from illnesses caused by exposure of the dust from the 9-11 site and more than 1,140 uh, 1, people who worked, lived, and studied in lower Manhattan at the time of the attack have been diagnosed with cancer as a result of the exposure to toxins at Ground Zero. At 5 p.m. on the day of the attacks, three New York City firefighters raised the American flag at Ground Zero. The flag was taken from the yacht Star of America, which had been docked in the Hudson River near the World Financial Center. Last Friday, we honored the 14th anniversary of this horrific event. In a moment, I'd like to read a poem about our flag and then take a moment of silence to remember those who lost their lives that day, those who have fought and died for our freedoms, and those who have served and those who continue to serve our country, our state, our counties, our cities, and our citizens that both protect and serve us as citizens of these United States of America. The ragged old flag. I walked, the, I walked through a county courthouse square. On a park bench, an old man was sitting there. I said, your old courthouse is kind of run down. He said, no, it'll do for our little town. I said, your old flagpole has leaned a little bit, and that's a ragged old flag you have hanging on it. He said, have a seat, and I sat down. Is this the first time you've been to our little town? I said, I think it is. And he said, I don't like to brag, but we're kind of proud of our ragged old flag. You see, we got a little hole in that flag there when Washington took it across the Delaware, and it got powder burned the night Francis Scott Key sat watching it while writing, oh say can you see. It got a bad rip in New Orleans with Packingham and Jackson tugging at its seams, and it almost fell at the Alamo beside the Texas flag, but she waved on though. She got cut with a sword at Chancellorsville, and she got cut again at Shallow Hill. There was Robert E. Lee, Beauregard, and Bragg, and the south wind blew hard on that ragged old flag. On Flanders Field in World War I, she got a big hole from a Bertha gun. She turned blood red in World War II, and she hung limp and low by the time it was through. She was in Korea and Vietnam, and she was sent where she was sent by her Uncle Sam. She waved from our ships upon the briny foam, and now they've about quit waving her here back at home. In her, good own, in her own good land where she's been abused, she's been burned, dishonored, denied, and refused. And the government for which she stands is scandalized throughout the land. And she's getting threadbare and she's wearing thin, but she's in good shape for the shape she's in. Because she's been through the fire before, and I believe she can take a whole lot more. So we raise her up every morning and we take her down every night, and we don't let her touch the ground, and we fold her up real tight. On second thought, I do like to brag, because I'm mighty proud of this ragged old flag. If you would, just please take a moment of silence. <clears throat>
Thank you. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Texas pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much, Mr. Sanders, Mrs. Bush. So that item two, uh, Dr. Stockton, uh, item two A, uh, special district recognition. <coughs> Well, first of all, Mr. Sanders, thank you for that. That was beautiful. Thank you. Um, and thank you for being here tonight. This is a big night for us. This is the night that we kick off our Read for nice. Better Life initiative. And we're very excited that each of you are here. We have some very special guest stars that you're going to meet in just a minute. And that's our students that are here that have volunteered to come tonight. So we thank them for that. We also want to recognize our librarians. We have several librarians in the room. Thank you for what you do and, and uh, making sure our kids are reading and providing those resources, we appreciate that. We believe reading is the fundamentally the most important thing a child can do to improve their life. And furthermore, we believe that the impact of a parent reading to a child 30 minutes a day will not only change that child's life, but it'll change the world. Colin Powell said years ago that what this world needs is more laptops. And he wasn't referring to those that plug into the wall. He was, he was referring to those where kids sit as parents and guardians read to them. So that's our challenge for all the parents within our school district boundaries and beyond tonight, that they spend 30 minutes a day reading with their children. And that truly will change a life and, and our future. So with that, I'm gonna invite our very special guests up here to first of all, introduce themselves to each of you, and then we're gonna sit down and I'm gonna read a book. So kids, if you'll come up here and line up with me right here at the microphone. Okay, we got a volunteer to go first apparently. Okay, now you're gonna turn that way because that's where all the faces are. So turn around this way. Okay, and just say your name and then have a seat right there. Gideon Willie. <clears throat> Nicholas Ramirez. Bella Turner. Isabella Dragon. <clears throat> Alyssa Velasquez. Lou Quetterly. <laughs> Akella Toss. Eva Lantain. Maya Lantain. Isabel Ramirez. Victoria Votano. Laura Votano. Tia Knight and Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I'll say uh, there's not an age limit. So anybody who wants to come up can come up at this time. Okay. I'll tell you what, can you back up just... Well, you have to have Sherry Broughton, who's our, their teacher here. I'm sorry, I missed... I, I forgot to introduce the guest leader, so thanks for coming tonight. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate all that you do with our children and all the educators in the room. We thank you. Okay, now we're going to do something a little different. A lot of times when someone reads to you, they'll read and then show you the picture. We're going even bigger than that. The picture is going to magically appear behind me on the screen. Okay? So with that, the title of the book is When I Grow Up. I waited so long for the hours to pass, but soon it was noon there in Mrs. Krupp's class. And Thursday at noon, as I'm sure you know well, is the time of the week when we do show and tell. And this week, the subject so special to me was when I grow up, what am I going to be? That's something I've really been thinking about, and I just couldn't wait to let all those thoughts out. So when Mrs. Krupp said, who's ready to share, you can guess who was there with his hand in the air. I raised both my hands just as high as they'd go, and I bounced up and down, and then, what do you know? <clears throat> well, Mrs. Krupp picked me, yes, me, to go first. Oh, I was so happy, I thought it would burst. I proudly stood up and began my oration concerning my choice for a future vocation. <clears throat> Esteemed friends and colleagues and dear Mrs. Krupp, I know what I'm going to be when I grow up. Why, I'll be the greatest chef you've ever seen. The world will go crazy for my hot cuisine. I'll tantalize the taste buds with my rigatoni, sautéed with black truffles and pickled bologna, surrounded by kumquats and candied pig's feet, toppled with shrimp-flavored lollipops, bon appetit. 
My walls will be filled with awards that I've gotten for toast on a stick and my Twinkies au gratin. My kitchen will be the most famous in France, so make reservations 12 years in advance. There's no doubt about it, I'm certain you'll see a world-renowned chef is what I'm gonna be. <clears throat> That's very nice, Billy, sweet Mrs. Krupp said. Who wants to be next? Maybe Susie, maybe Fred. I said, hold the phone now, I haven't departed. Hang on to your seats, because I'm just getting started. So, see, maybe I, instead I could be a snail trainer. <clears throat> Man, that would be awesome. Why? That's a no-brainer. I'll teach all my snails to do really neat tricks. They'll play dead, roll over, even fetch sticks. Of course, all the sticks will come back two years later, but working with snails, I mean, what could be greater? They do any stunt that I like, holy moly, I'll train them to pedal a bike really slowly. Then jump, I mean ooze through a huge ring of fire and crawl at a snail's pace across a high wire. They'd then finish by writing my name with their trails. That's right, I'll be Billy, the master of snails. Or else maybe I'll be the, a lathe operator who makes the hydraulic torque wrench calibrator, which fine tunes the wrenches that specifically made to retighten the nuts on the lateral blade. That's directly beneath the main radial sockets inside cooling systems on X-14 rockets. And since this profession's as cool as can be, well, who would be better to do it than me? So here's an idea, perhaps just for laughs, I might make my living by milking giraffes. It's also oh cliche to get milk from a cow, and I bet all those cows need a break anyhow. Imagine me milking my way up in the air. I'd use a tall ladder instead of a chair. What, milking giraffes, Mrs. Krupp said? Oh, please. I countered, how else could we make giraffe cheese? <laughs> now, don't interrupt me. I'm not really through yet, but there's still a lot of stuff that I'm going to do yet. Because maybe I'll be a gorilla masseuse or an artist who sculpts out of chocolate mousse or a rodeo clown or a movie director or maybe professional pickle inspector or a big sumo wrestler or hedge fund investor or smelly pit sniffing deodorant tester. <laughs> or I'll be an expert on nuclear fission or else a foot model or a friendly mortician or a waiter or a skater or a master debater or a dinosaur dusting museum curator or a TV repairman, or a sidewalk sign waiver, or part-time assistant tarantula shaver. And that's about what Mrs. Krebs said, now Billy, please make up your mind, this is getting quite silly. Which one of those things are you going to choose? I shuffled around and I looked at my shoes. And finally I said, my great-grandfather Bob's been a whole lot of things, had a whole lot of jobs. A butcher, a barber, a bellman, a bouncer, a telephone psychic, a bingo announcer. You know what? He just turned 103, and he's still not quite sure what he wants to be. See, I'm only eight now, so frankly, I'm hoping you'll cut me some slack if I leave options open. Let's just wait and find out what my future brings. Hey, I might have time to do all of these things. And then the bell rang, and we all went to lunch. And as I was sipping my pineapple punch, I pondered professions that I'd like to enter, like brave firefighter or crazy inventor. Or maybe, just maybe now, when I grow up, I can be a great teacher like dear Mrs. Krupp. And that is the end. All right. <laughs> so do you guys know what you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to be? A basketball player, football player, and a baseball player. Wow, you're gonna be you're gonna be really busy, but but you know what you know what I tell people who want to be professional athletes? Good luck. <laughs> but also have a backup plan just in case that doesn't work. Yes. A dancer? No. Wow, if we had more time, would you give us an example? Yes? Um, a mom. A mom. You know, that is, that is beautiful. That's the, probably the most important job you could have. Yes? A dentist. A dentist, that's great. Well, you know, y yes. A vet. A vet, very good. You know, you have some time to figure it out. So uh, one way to help you figure it out is read as much as you can. Because if you read about things, you learn about things, and that creates opportunities and interest for yourself. So just read as much as you can, and encourage your parents to read, because um, that's really important too. Anybody have anything else you want to share about the book before we let you go? You've been a great audience. Did you practice this? <laughs> just comes naturally. <laughs> Does Ms. Broughton read like to you? Home too. Yes. Yes. yes, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I knew the answer to that. You were okay. I knew the answer to that. So. Well, boys and girls, 
thank you for coming tonight and thank the thank the person you allowed to come with you uh, tonight uh, to Sherry, thank you for being here. And just you guys have a great school year, okay? Okay, thank you. And to all our librarians back there that Dr. Stockton recognized, would you mind standing up right quick? We appreciate that. And thank you for being here and all you do. <coughs> Mrs. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes, sir. For the next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if resolution cannot be administrate, uh, reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations of five of more than five must appoint one representative to, rep to present their views to the board. Ms. Godfrey, please call the first person who is signed to address the board. Uh, Mr. Brian Simbersky. Good evening. Thank, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to address the board. I'd also like to thank Mr. Dan Cox, who I spoke to last week, who suggested I come out tonight to talk to you. Uh, I'm here tonight to ask the board to consider transportation risks that our students face on the roads. It's unfortunate to today's incident in Houston uh, it happened today. Um, I'm, uh, it was a tragic day. Two students lost their life. The, uh, their parents woke up this morning, got their kids ready to go to school, uh, probably uh, prepared them with their homework and, and probably read books to them last night when they tucked them into bed. And little did they know that today was the last day that they'd see them. Uh, I'm a parent of three CISD students. Uh, I want to make sure that the administrations examine these risks. Uh, I'm also work in the transportation industry and I know that school buses are inherently designed safe. Uh, in many uh, facets, but the one area of great concern for me is rollovers. Uh, I came across in preparing for um, tonight's address two incidents that happened recently, one in Chicago and one in Indianapolis. And, and the incidents were basically identical, where buses were rolled over and students in the bus were, were impacted. In, in Chicago, all the students got off the bus uh, they were all buckled in with seat belts, and there were only minor injuries with the students. Unfortunately, in Indianapolis, as it was today in Houston, two students lost their lives. And the difference in both these scenarios was in Illinois, seat belts and school buses is legislated, and in Indiana, it's not. Uh, as a parent, I, I trust that the school board, the school administration, and the many wonderful teachers that my wife and I have met since we've been in Texas, we'll take care of our students and take care of our children. And, and I'd like to thank the board for this opportunity and hope that you look at uh, the risks related to rollovers and consider seatbelts as a proper mitigation to prevent more loss of life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, item three is the consent agenda. I have been re I've, uh, had a request to remove <coughs> items eight and item G, uh, J. So uh, first I will uh, entertain a motion for the consent agenda minus those two items, please. So move, approval. And a second. A second. Very good. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed like sign. Okay, item 3H, selection of bond underwriters RFQ 1507-05. I don't know what your question is, so I'll, I'll yield the floor to you. Okay, thank you. Well, I did ask for that to, to come out. Um, just in preparing for this, I just wanted to note that I know today we're not voting on who the uh, who's going to be the underwriter for the bonds. I understand that, but 
I also understand that we're narrowing it down as well. And of the 10 that have been narrowed down to that will be, uh, we were going to narrow it down to, one of them happens to be a firm by the name of Raymond James. And as a financial planner, we all have to have broker dealers. And although I have nothing to do with writing bonds, Raymond James is my broker dealer. So I didn't want to vote on that. I wanted to abstain on a vote. So you abstain today. from all discussion and the vote. Absolutely. Very good. Let the record show so. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to pass item H. Motion. Second. Second. Thank Second. you. Any any discussion? Further discussion? All those uh, uh, approve. Raise your right hand. All uh, like sign for those opposed. Very good. And um, item 3J. Consider approval for amendment to sped.com Inc. Contract for purchase of subscription services from LPAC Software. Yes, sir, that was me again. I, just a quick question. Um, it looks like we are amending, or there's, there's going to be an amendment to the, to the contract. So the one question I have is, on 10A, the contract says the second sentence should read, this agreement will automatically renew each year on the anniversary of the service term start date for up to four additional one-year terms. My question is, does that replace the entire sentence there? Because the original sentence also says that, and shall continue in full force effect until termination by either party upon 30 days written notice. My question is, is, 30 days. is, it, is that still going to be in there? Are we still gonna have the opportunity to get out of it within 30 days? Yes. Okay, that's go. all I had. Thank oh. you. Would you like to make the motion? I make the motion. Um, and second. Motion, second approval. Okay. Any further discussion, questions? All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Evans. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for paying attention. Item 4A, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, 4A, read for, uh, read for a better life resolution. Dr. Stock. Dr. Hines, will you come to the podium and present that resolution, please? Thank you, Dr. Stock. President Husbands, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Stockton, <clears throat> reading is fundamental to the academic success of children. The Conroe Independent School District recognizes that the single most important activity to build the knowledge required for their eventual success in reading is reading aloud to children. Reading aloud builds sound and word awareness and stimulates language development. It helps children to practice listening and provides students with a greater range of experiences. In addition, the nurturing attention from parents during reading encourages children to form a positive association with reading. Reading to children builds motivation, curiosity, and memory. And reading is not only a vital skill and a fundamental function of today's society, but reading is a gateway to new ideas, to learning, and provides fuel for the imagination. Therefore, the Board of Trustees are respectfully requested to consider the adoption of the, um, the following resolution which proclaims that the staff of CISD will support Read for a Better Life and authorizes the district to enlist the support of the parents and community of CISD to read aloud to every student 30 minutes of every day. And the resolution is as follows. Whereas the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees recognizes that being read to aloud is the single most important activity for children to build the knowledge required for their eventual success in reading, and whereas the Board of Trustees recognizes that success in reading is the gateway to success in other academic areas, and whereas the Board of Trustees recognizes that an individual's ability to read affects all aspects of their lives, form the development of critical thinking and problem-solving skills to gaining knowledge about the world in which we live, thus making them a valued and contributing member of society. It is therefore resolved that the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees proclaims that the staff of CISD will support Read for a Better Life and authorizes the district to enlist the support of the parents and community of CISD to read aloud to every student 30 minutes of every day. We ask for your approval. I hear a motion. Mr. President, I move we approve the resolution as presented. Second. A second. All those uh, in favor raise, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much, and thank you everyone in this room who has everything to do, anything and everything to do with uh, the reading initiative. And Dr. Stockton, 
thank you for your support. Uh, item 5A, uh, select construction manager at risk for MEP life cycle 2016, Dr. Stockton. Uh, Mr. Foster, would you pl please present that item? President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval tonight the selection of a construction manager at risk for our 2016 life cycle project. It's a project that consists of items related to mechanical, electrical, plumbing, building envelope, and athletic renovations. If you recall, in July, the Board of Trustees selected PBK as our architect and engineer for this project. Uh, since then, PBK has prepared and published for us a request for qualifications in a two-step selection process for construction managers at risk. Two companies responded to our uh, request for qualifications. We reviewed those qualifications based on our published criteria. GTT Construction and Comex Corporation were both asked to, to participate in step two. Step two is where we receive their pricing and uh, participate in an interview process with our selection committee. GTT Construction was selected as the offeror submitted the best, or submitted the proposal determined to be the best value for the district based on our published criteria in our ranking evaluation. The government code requires that we publish our rankings within seven days after the contract is awarded. But we've chosen to include that ranking as part of your board package in the uh, item tonight. This time, I request your approval for GTT as the construction manager at risk. Motion. For project. Second. The motion to the second. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. <laughs> Item 5B, consider approval of a guaranteed maximum price amendment for Woodlands High School locker room addition phase two. Dr. Sykes. Mr. Foster. This time I request your consideration and approval of a guaranteed maximum price amendment for the Woodlands High School locker room additions <clears throat> this is phase two, and this would also be to delegate the authority of Dr. Stockton to execute the contract documents. In, in the July board meeting, you, uh, we brought for you phase one of uh, this project, uh, which was the parking lot additions at the Woodlands High School, which allowed us to free up the space for the actual building addition, which is uh, the, what I'm presenting for you tonight. Balfour Beatty Construction was selected as the construction manager at risk uh, for this project, and since then, we have advertised for bids for the building package, received those bids, and we have negotiated the guaranteed maximum price for this portion of the project. The guaranteed maximum price is $3,926,317. Contract is currently being prepared by outside counsel, and upon your approval tonight, uh, we will seek to execute that and begin work on this project. So at this time, I request your approval for GMP for phase two. Uh, we need to make a little modification to that we need um or asking for the authority to further negotiate the contract um because there are some issues that arose and so assuming that we can come to terms of to negotiate and execute the contract will those uh, negotiations that's, that's change the price <laughs> yeah uh, um potentially okay but in a favorable manner. you say so oh, it's still a guarantee <laughs> max here right yes so as long as that's a max yeah i'm comfortable Forcing the authority to negotiate and execute, not just execute. Okay. Any? I move. We've got to move before we discuss, correct? So I yes. make a motion. A second. I have a motion and a second. Please continue with the discussion. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> I'm okay. I have a question about the scope of work. Yeah. Can yes, you sir. Give me a brief overview of the scope of work. The scope of work for the project is to um, um, provide additional athletic locker room space for the girls' athletics program specifically. Mm -hmm. So in that, we will be adding additional square footage to the Woodlands High School building, which will add that additional square, foot, square footage required, as well as we're going to reorganize the existing uh, girls' athletic space to be a more contiguous. So the existing space will Tom, be contigu yeah. contiguous with the new space. Okay. And in phase one, correct me if I'm wrong, we added parking lot space so we didn't actually lose any spaces in doing this. That is correct. Okay. Any, any other questions? Motion and second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. 
Motion passes. <laughs> Item C, approved selection of construction uh, services provided for East County Transportation Center parking lot. Dr. Stockton. Okay, Mr. Foster. At this time, I request your, for your consideration and approval, uh, the selection of a construction service provider for East County Transportation Center parking lot improvements, and then delegate the authority of uh, Dr. Stockton to negotiate and execute the service provider agreement. In July, our Board of Trustees approved the use of competitive bidding as the best method for selecting a construction service provider for this project. Since then, uh, civil engineer Brooks and Sparks uh, designed, prepared the bidding documents, and published the request for competitive bids for this project. We received these bids in our office, uh, reviewed each of the bids for completeness of scope. Three companies responded to the uh, uh, request for bids, Dinko Construction, or Dinko Incorporated, 4C Construction Services, and Four Seasons Development Company. After reviewing each of the bids and qualifications, Dinko Inc. was selected as a proposer after considering the uh, <coughs> price as the selection criteria. We've published all three prices, so you can see how they line up. Uh, line up. Cost proposals uh, are outlined in our board item. Dinko Inc., you'll see it was the lowest cost provider, and we're recommending that you approve them as the construction service provider. I hear a motion. Motion. And a I second. second the motion. And a motion and a second. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed to like sign. <laughs> hey, item 6A is to consider resolution approving the district's investment program and list of qualified investment brokers. Before we go any further, I would ask Mr. Sanders uh, for a word. Yes, I will be abstaining from this discussion and vote due to the fact that I have a conflict of interest. My employer, Wood Forest National Bank, is listed as one of those to be approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Dr. Stockton. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rice, if you'll... I lost you just a moment. <laughs> Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Uh, tonight we're recommending that the Board of Trustees adopt a resolution approving the district investment program and a list of qualified investment brokers. In compliance with board policy and the Public Funds Investment Act, the Board of Trustees must annually review the district's investment policy and strategies. Additionally, the Board of Trustees is required to annually review, revise, and adopt a list of qualified investment brokers that are authorized to engage in investment transactions with the district. The district has determined that the brokers named in the resolution are the most highly qualified and will meet the needs of the district in this area. Uh, the list of qualified brokers is the same as last year, except we're requesting to add TCG Advisors, and we're also asking to add Stiefel Nicholas Incorporated. They bought out Sternagee, who was previously on the list. I recommend you adopt the attached resolution. I hear a motion. Motion. Second. Second. Who motion is second? Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign, and any abstentions? Let the record show that Sanders abstained. Item 6B, consider resolution approving the uh, sources of instruction relating to investment responsibilities. Dr. Stock. Mr. Rice. Yes, tonight we're recommending that the Board of Trustees adopt the resolution approving sources of instruction relating to investment responsibilities in compliance with board policy and the Public Funds Investment Act the district investment officers must attend investment training from an independent source approved by the Board of Trustees. The training must occur not less than once in a two-year period and must be a minimum of 10 hours of instruction related to investment responsibilities. TASB, TASA, TASBO, and any locally associated TASBO affiliates, Harris County Department of Education, and Region Service Centers provide many training opportunities related to investment responsibilities and are recommended in the attached resolution as sources for this required training. I recommend you adopt the attached resolution. Motion. 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 I have a motion. Second. And a second. Uh, any discussion? Yes. Questions? Yes. Who are our investment officers? We're going to, that'll, we're, we're going to go on the next, next resolution. <laughs> well, my bad. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Seems so, like the officer. So we're going to require training, but we don't know who we're going to require <laughs> training of yet. I should have flipped that. Well, I'll go along with it. Yeah. Any further discussion, questions? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. <clears throat> and item C, Dr. Stockton. Okay, Mr. Rice. 
Yes, we're recommending the Board of Trustees adopt a resolution designating the district investment officers. Okay. In compliance with board policy and Public Funds Investment Act, the Board of Trustees is required to designate one or more employees as investment officer for the district. We recommend that the board adopt the attached resolution that designates the chief financial officer and the executive director of finance as the investment officers of the district. I recommend you adopt the attached resolution. I have a motion? Motion. So Second. And a second. Any discussion? Who are they? Yeah. That's all I was going to ask is just, we could just list who those two people are. It, it would be, it would be you and Dan right. at this point, yeah, right? Dan Cox That's what I thought. Very good. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Very good. Any other discussion, questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Okay. And financial reports. Dr. Stockton. Mr. Rice. <laughs> Yes, this evening I'd like to present the financial statements for the district for the month of August. These statements will include the general fund, debt service fund, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet for the month of August. I would like to point out that August is our year end, and so we will have audit entries in, 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 in areas, so these financial statements will, will change. Uh, the balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances. Uh, we always like to look at our cash and investments in our asset column, and we'll concentrate on the general fund. We have cash on hand of $13,300. We have bank deposits of $225,000. We have investments in external pool funds of $21.5 million. Uh, we have investments in our Capital One Now account at roughly $65 million. We have investments that are now within one year that are about $17 million. And our longer term investments that are a year greater is $43.6 million for total cash and investments of $147 million in the general fund. The next statement we'll look at is our in income statement. The income statement includes our revenues and our expenditures and our fund balances for the district. In the revenue columns, they're made of, of three. One is local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and our federal program revenues. And looking at the detail behind our local and intermediate sources, uh, you can see the breakdown for each one of the funds. In the general fund and debt service, the largest producer of income is our property taxes. Mm -hmm. In food service, it comes from food sales. And in self-funded insurance, it comes from premium contributions. We can also look at our expenditures at the functional level. In the general fund, you can see the largest uh, area of expenditure we have is our instruction. Our projected unassigned fund balance in the general fund. Uh, we're projecting uh, a little bit more than we did during the budget process. Our ADA came in really strong, so uh, state funding is going to be uh, nice and high this year for us, so a little bit of increase there. Our projected fund balance in the debt service fund, our projection has not changed, uh, just a slight decrease of $1.5 million. And our projected fund balance in child nutrition is still uh, projected to decrease about $875,000. This is getting us in line with our three-month limit. Our self-funded insurance, uh, 831 was our year end. Uh, so we had total revenues for the year of $35.3 million. We had total expenses that totaled $37.9 million. That leaves us with revenues under expenses of $2.7 million. Uh, participation at our wellness centers at Oak Ridge, we had total uh, patients of uh, 5,463. And in Conroe, we had 1,955 for a total of 7,418 uh, on the year. We averaged 618 a month. Our investments for the month. Uh, we ended July at 244 million invested. Uh, we ended August 226 million dollars invested. The wham of the pools in the Capital One were one day, and they're yielding close to 20 basis points. The wham of our investments that are within a year, those are mainly our U.S. Treasuries that we bought right at the beginning. Uh, their wham is 244 days and they're yielding almost 40 basis points. And we have our longer term investments that are out further than one year, that, that, that wham is 757 days and they're yielding uh, full percent. So the wham of our total our complete portfolio is 147 days and yielding a little over 35 basis points. And our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, is at one basis point. And that's all we have. Any questions? 
Russ, I just have one question. Yes, sir. Um, with the uh, uh, health care uh, 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 self-funded plan, uh, we made a an additional in the budget for this year. We made an additional one million dollar contribution. One point eight million. Yes. Sir. One point eight. Yes. Sir. From 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 the employer side. Yes. Sir. And the we, employee side. And the employee side. I it was about one point one million. One point one million. It was right at the three. Thank you. <coughs> Item 9A, consider purchase of approximately 17.67 acres of elementary school site, Oak Ridge Feeder Zone. Dr. Stockton. Mrs. Gladys. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Mr. Husman, members of the board, you were received via email a copy of the contract earlier so that you'd have a chance to review this product of a lot of hard work and negotiation by Mr. Cox and our outside counsel. Brett Beatty, but we were pleased with the outcome of the contract and the purchase price of two million sixty-five thousand dollars for this parcel right off of 242. Um, and we ask that you approve uh, the purchase. Do I hear a motion? Motion. And a second. second. Motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Go right, we'll get it. You good? Go Item 9B, nomination 2016-17, Montgomery County Central Appraisal District Board of Directors. Dr. Stockton. Mrs. Glass. Thank you. You know, Dr. Stockton and I laugh. This item seems to come up like every year, but it doesn't. It's every two years, and so it is the second year. Um, the end of the term for the folks we nominated and elected last time is up in uh, January 1st. A new board will be sworn in. And this is the time up until October 14th that juris jurisdictions can make nominations for candidates to the board. There are five positions on the board, so you can make to nominate up to five people. Um, and so this is your opportunity now to make that nomination. Once we send in our nominations, all the jurisdictions must have theirs submitted by the 14th, and they'll send us a ballot on the 15th, and we'll uh, vote at your November meeting. On, um, sure. Is anybody... Uh, Spoken with it. I mean, I have, but I mean, has anybody spoken with anybody who served in the past? I was told that those same folks want to run, right? Well, that's not true. That's not true. Well, it might be the ones well, I, that we nominated. It's true, it's true that I did hear that, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not true that they all want to serve. So, therefore, um, uh, I, Judge Sadler does not have a desire to serve again. Yeah, that's the one I heard. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, but yet, uh, uh, Mike Metter, uh, excuse me, Tom Cox, and Ed Chance, Ed Chance all do want to serve. And so uh, with that, uh, the, the other board member that always receives all the that all the MUD districts go together to elect one person, and that's Biff Bacone. So he's almost like, you know, on or, or whoever they choose is whoever they choose, so to speak. Uh, Tammy McRae serves as, uh, uh, what is it? Like a, 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 by a appointment, chamber. by appointment without a vote. Yeah. And so uh, I did hear of one person in addition to the two that we nominated last year that, that has a desire to serve, and that is Bruce Tuff. He has been nominated already by the MUD. He's the yes. candidate. Um, so, so I would uh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, I, I think that with the growth in the county and with the growth in our district, I'd like to see someone from the Oak Ridge area in particular and actually talk to somebody that was interested. And so I would like to submit um, Paul Vercher's name for nomination. Spell the last name. V-E-R-C-H-E-R. Paul Vercher. Okay, and uh, I would like to submit Tom Cox and uh, Ed Chase. I agree with that. Anybody else? Okay. So we get to we so get four. Un, un, well, no, understand. We we can uh, we can nominate whoever, however many we right. want. Right. But but we, we, but we. Uh, uh, that's why that because of the numbers sure. so um, um, if nobody else has a name I would uh, I would uh, 
make a motion that we nominate these three. Okay, I'll second I'll, the motion. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Any further discussion? Just for clarification, mm -hmm. we didn't add Bruce Tuff because he's already on there. Is that what you're saying? You could, we can nominate him. You don't need to. Okay. There's no need. I, I tell you what, okay. uh, I, I, would, I would like to amend the motion just if, if it's all right with y'all. Uh, I would also like to nominate Mike Metter and Bruce Tuff from this board. And that's regardless of whether we give them one vote or no votes or whatever, I would like to nominate them. So the, the this next board meeting will be determining how many votes we distribute, how we distribute our votes. Mm -hmm. No, when you when you vote, when we get that ballot, it'll be the November meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. November. Uh, November. So, so uh, the amended motion uh, is uh, Ed Chance, Tom Cox, Mike Metter, Bruce Tuff, and Paul Vercher. Anybody have a problem? No. Any, any addition to it? Well, huh? <laughs> Not with, no, the with the nomination. Not with the nomination. Not with the nomination. Okay. So I'll second that motion. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I'm sorry about that. No problem. All those in favor, <laughs> signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like say. And entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, sir. We stand adjourned. All right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.